and wow. uh, and I'm nine, and yet see, I can remember. Yes, that and we didn't. Th that didn't have a name at the time. I didn't know corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another session of the Playhouse. This one you must watch. This is the second time I'm doing this intro, but hey, that's how that's what happens because of the nerves. Anyway, let's get straight into this. Today's CTA is a must watch. We have got an amazing, amazing, amazing human being. Somebody who's been who's managed to accomplish a lot, but beyond even just their accomplishment and their achievement, somebody who is such an amazing, amazing human being. This is a holistic CTA, and this is one that I urge you to watch. It doesn't matter where in the world that you are at, this one you need to watch. So let me get straight in into introducing our guests. There's so much about her, so I wrote it on one of our nice CTA placards for me to read. I will take this nice and slow because I couldn't have crammed all this. She is the global head of Actor Solutions at Meta. I didn't stutter, I didn't mince my words, I got it right, at Meta. She's the former global head of misrepresentation at Meta. She's the former country lead, Microsoft Kenya. She's worked at Oracle, Checkpoint Software Technologies Limited, HP, Interswitch Groups, to name but a few. I can't just spend the whole time doing the intro. She is the founder of She Goes Tech. This is uh, an icon in the tech world, global. I'm not just talking about within the context of Kenya or Africa. She is an icon when it comes to tech globally. So this is going to be such an interesting city to watch. She is, and this I found this very interesting and we're having conversations uh, uh, part of the reason as to why she's in Kenya was to do some of this she is a storyteller coach a global instructor with the moth and part of the and part of the people who are who who finance the moth are would be Gates Foundation Ford Foundation and she's going to be telling us more about that but the fact that she's a storyteller coach damn I'd like to know more about that she is a co-founder at Prosper Path. Yes, she's got her own company called Prosper Path. And she's a co-founder. We are going to be hearing more about this. Guys, this CTA is one that is so rich that you definitely have to watch it. On this platform, we don't just like to introduce people on the basis of their credentials and their career, but holistically. She is a mother, she is a wife, and she is an all-round good person. So Wamai and Aizo, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Put your hands together for none other than Candy Ntwiga! <laughs> oh, Andy Richie, the hype. <laughs> it's not hype, it's truth. I'm just yeah, reading. as in, I listened to that and I, yeah. You've, you, you've, you've got an amazing CV. I'm going to be honest and say you've got an amazing CD, CV, very rare. You, you left one thing out, which is, <laughs> which is what, where I start. Uh -huh. I'm, a ch I'm the child of the Most High God. Ooh. As in, that's, that's where I start. I love that. Yeah. I left a lot of things out. I even forgot to mention that you sit on boards. For example, <laughs> you sit on the KCB board. You sit on that. Ma Masiko as well. Let me, let me make you guys understand how amazing this is. Kendi flew in. Kendi's schedule has been so crazy, but she moved things around, cleared her whole Saturday for us to do this CTA today because she flies out today to go and attend a board meeting. No, I'm going back home, uh, where home is. Uh, okay, where home is. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into this. And I love the fact that you did say that you are a, a child of the Most High. Mm. Um, and you've proudly said it. Mm. Um, I didn't leave it out. I think sometimes I leave it to the person to say. Okay. Yeah. Okay, CTA, we take this thing slowly. We start at the beginning. If you want to stop, if you want to cry, if you want to laugh, <laughs> feel free. Forget mm. all these guys who are who call the camera. Mm -hmm. It's just me and you having a conversation and Wama and Aizo here. Mm -hmm. So I love starting this thing at the very beginning. And the very beginning is, when were you born? Where were you born? Let's like day one. You want to know my age? Okay, well, <laughs> it, it's okay. I'm, I'm comfortable. Um, when was I born? Where was I born? I was actually born in Embu. Um, mm. 
in 1980, yes. I was born in Embu to my mother and I was raised in Embu, Mm. part of it. Um, (laughs) I'm wondering, okay, born, born, born. Okay, let me help you. Mm -hmm. In what number in the family are you? We are four. Uh And in that number four? I'm second. Let's break down for me the structure so I can get okay. an understanding. All right. So um, I'm the second born by the first girl. I have an older brother. Oh, Prof. Hey, Bundi. Congratulations, Prof. We are so proud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then I have my younger sister and my younger brother. Okay. Yeah. So when you're born in Embu, it's your dad, your mom, and um, and you, of course, now. Who's... Yeah. So tell me your early memories. Tell me what's it like growing up in Embu. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, so when I was, when, from what, I, okay, my sister keeps asking me, what, what are my earliest memories? And I realized I loved being in Embu. Um, you know, Embu, when there was provincials and all that, uh, so Embu was a provincial headquarter for mm. Eastern Province. Mm. So what would happen, Embu had all these provincial heads and then district heads. And most of them would come from around the country. Because I remember like, like there was the Weres, there was the Kabulundis, which is not your traditional people from Mount Kenya. Mm. And my mom, she's, she was a teacher in St. Michael, which is where I went. And St. Michael is still a very good primary school, I believe. I haven't been back there for some time. So it was a good life. Oh, that, that was in Blue Valley. We lived in Blue Valley. <laughs> for those <laughs> coming from Embu, you would know Blue Valley. Then at some point... When I was the, as a young girl, let me, before even going to, moving from Blue Valley to Kang, to Kangaro area, which is where the, um, some of the government offices are. And my dad is a civil servant. So he's a, he's a water engineer and was working in Embu as well in the provincial headquarters, just serving the full of Eastern. Um, what I remember the most about being a young girl, because I'm, I'm Meru. That's mm. in, and my aunties would come from Meru. And I didn't learn to speak Meru too well first. I would speak Embu because around me, most of the people were Embu. I remember my aunties would come and my uncles. And my, uh, the, my mom would encourage me to, like, because I loved saying poems. So I, would, I was a very um, outgoing girl. Mm. I would stand on seats and tables and recite these poems and entertain. And I would love, because one of my aunties, she's, she's um, Imenti. If you're from Meru, you would know the different tongues of Meru. So she's Imenti. Mm. And she would speak in that tongue. And I'm like, I would love to know how to speak Meru like that, which I've never quite still learned. But anyway, so my childhood was a happy childhood. Mm. When I think of it, it was a happy childhood. At age nine, I went to boarding school. Um, ah, it's not this far. Let's go to the CTA, you will understand the pace of slow. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I would love to understand mm-hmm. the environment then. Okay. Uh, so actually, not, not even just the environment, even even your living con- conditions. Mm-hmm. So people may be thinking Meru and they're thinking Mad Hats. Mm-hmm. People, be, I mean, Embu and they're thinking Mad Hats. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like Embu is this flourishing town at, this is yeah. the 80s. Yeah. So, so paint me a picture of the community that you're living in. It was, it was town. It was town. It was modern. It was a cosmo space, as a, a cosmopolitan space. Because, like you've had, there were people from western, people from coasts, people mm. from everywhere. Because you know how government posts their provincial heads. As in, you are either a national head or a provincial head or a district head. Mm. And at the time, I think we had like maybe 40 districts. So even a district head was a, an administrative figurehead that was celebrated nice. in the in the 80s. So because of that, we would actually go for parties, um, I remember, which is the things I would enjoy. I, I was a flower girl for so many weddings, which were like amazing, modern, Fun with as in, I had fun. Mm. We spoke my mother tongue because you remember in and I I don't know if you remember this but um, when we were in primary school we did mother tongue because Embu was was a town was a cosmo town our mother tongue was Swahili mm. so you see if you were really out of a town and I believe if you were in a town the mother tongue language that was done in 
at the 844 system for those who did 844 was either your local language so if you are for if you are not in the CBD mm -hmm. you would do like if Kiembu for example if you are in if you are in Embu or if you are in Meru you do Kimeru mm. uh, but if you are in the town in the central business district you would do Kiswahili yep. so that's to explain to you that it was actually a town it mm. was in my opinion it was a city yep. <laughs> as in it was super modern um, the house we were in it was most of what I remember, it was a two-bedroom house. Uh, we shared the bedroom. So with my brother and myself, my older brother and myself, uh, we, there was a bed, there was a bedroom, one we shared on one of the bedrooms, because most of the time it was just the two of us mm. before the younger ones came, because there's a, a, a bigger age difference between me and my followers. Um, and we had a deca, so it was good. The yeah, families, it. my cousins yeah. would come from uh, Meru, because most of them were in Meru. Then we would have sleepovers. It was, it was a modern town home. I get it. Where they are attached, as in like there's um, like an estate, like so blue. When I say Blue Valley, Blue Valley is an estate, like. Uh -huh. And those who are live, those the teachers were there, the nurses were there, because those are the professions of mm -hmm. the parents that were thriving, you know, and. While most of the leaders, the provincial leaders, were men, their wives were teachers mm -hmm. or maybe nurses, but most of them were teachers. And so that's how we would get invited. And my mom would always go with me. Yep. Um, so that's how she would get invited to some of these um, parties or be invited to help go cook and then would go and play now in the government bigger houses, you know, which, which have just like even in Nairobi, how there's government houses in say half an acre mm -hmm. or an acre piece of land. And there's a lot of party and music and good time going on. So I really loved growing up in Embu. I, I, I yeah, I, I, I loved, I loved, when I think of it, I loved my childhood. It, it, it sounds like it. What's that famous place in Embu. There's a hotel that... Isaac Walton. Yes. That's yes. The one with all the clocks. Yes. <laughs> yes. Isaac Walton was a place to be. So you can imagine we would go to Isaac Walton. Okay. Yes. You, you get, As in we were fine. We were... You were my, my, we, we were babies. Yes. We, we, were, we were babies. Yes. yes. We, we would okay. go. Yeah. I've, 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 I've gotten the understanding. There. How is... Mm. What's, what's, what's home like? Or, um, what's your relationship with your dad like? What's your relationship with your mom like? Mm. Tell me a little bit about your parents. Uh, my parents... My mom, super strict. Again, teacher, super, super strict. My dad, a bit reserved, um, quiet but firm. So he didn't speak a lot. He, but when he spoke, you knew, hey, you need to comply because when, <laughs> <laughs> or if he, if he caught you doing something, uh, if, if he reprimanded you, mm. then you took it a bit more seriously because, yeah, um, he was the authority. He was, he was, he was, quiet but the the authority my mom just she was strict she was like super strict which we enjoy her now when we go home and even now sometimes because uh, she's eased up i think age is good <laughs> <laughs> age, age is good because now now she's she's even done counseling she's a um a, she has her master's in counseling yeah so she's, she now is more in touch with the people side mm -hmm. of, of aspects. So, so we look at her and I, I, I was with her, um, which we'll come to, but I was with her just this week, mm -hmm. which uh, I asked her to come because I, I, I landed just a week ago, which was Saturday. So I asked her to come for us to do, to spend together the two nights as we catch up. Mm -hmm. And one of the conversations um, I was having with her, so she says something and she's easy. She's the, she, I'm, I'm talking to her about my kids. And then she's like, but you know, can you think about this thing? And I'm like, huh, mom, <laughs> when you were bringing us up, how come you didn't think about this thing? So she laughs. Um, but yes, so my mom, super, super strict. Okay. My dad chilled. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've understood that. Okay, mm -hmm. let's now check into education. Mm -hmm. okay. So the first school that you go to is? Um... Salvation Army Nursery School, I even forgot it. We used to wear white and red checked dresses. It was, my mom, she, she, she really, and, and you'll see, I think, a lot features, and my mom features a lot, but she, over time I have come to realize I'm her daughter. You know, when, mm. when you see yourself. You're your mother's daughter. Yes, I'm mm. my mother's daughter, for sure. She really went the extra mile to make sure that we were getting the best things possible. So at the time, the famed nursery school, because we didn't do kindergarten, 
um, was the Salvation Army Primary School. Because we'd go, they'd take care of us, or would sleep at, um, in the afternoon, which, yeah, so, and it was a private nursery school. So mm -hmm. I also loved that space. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, I've, just, I've just remembered now, I was the kind of child who, because I would be sent um, with those dishes, and it, I don't know if people remember them. It was circular, and then it has a handle. I don't know if they still make them. Um, he, he, this guy might not know. What might do, do you remember? It, it was... <laughs> it was <laughs> Richie may not know. <laughs> no, Richie may not know. So it was, it's circular. It's, it, it's a very simple dish. Mm -hmm. So circular, and then it has like a white, um, like cover on top, so you can put one, meal under and then on top I know, oh, you know no. them on top it I has and then, yeah then a kifuniko that's circular yeah. with a handle yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. do <laughs> yes that one yes yeah. yes plastic yeah. though oh <laughs> plastic yeah. yes yeah uh, so I would use that that's what my, my mom would pack snacks snacks and then I've just remembered now in that salvation army because when I'm when I'm walking when I would be walking to the nursery school and maybe walking back because it was it was close distance I would come back and sometimes I don't have it, or I've, 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 I don't, yeah. And when my dad would ask me, Candy, what happened to your dish? I'd be like, I gave to my friend. And he would look at me every time. He'd be like, what? You gave what? So at some point they stopped, as in I was naturally just giving. Oh, at some nice. point they stopped asking me. But then they started telling me, you know, we can't always be buying. We can't always <laughs> afford to be replacing. But that's a story that features a lot when they speak about my childhood and now we are meeting as a family and we're trying to remember what kind of a child you I was. You are a giver. Yes, I, the, the natural aspect of me was the outgoing um, person who loved to say poems to just entertain in that mm -hmm. sense and to not just naturally love on people, you know, okay. give. That's, that's the, that was the natural child of me. And I say that because as we go through the journey, you will see the different things that I had to adapt to change on and off. Yeah. So from Salvation Army? Wh so from Salvation, uh -huh. yes. Um, I went, that's when I, I was taken to St. Michael, the primary school. St. Michael was the best primary school uh, in Embu at wow. the time. So you needed, and I, don't, and I don't know if it's still the case right now, but it was the best government, you know, um, the district, DB, DB was what? Business, anyway, those ones. I just remember it's a, it's, it was the best school, the best mm. primary school at the time. People wanted to get to St. Michael. And my mom was a teacher there. So I remember going in class one and she's, of course, she's, I'm showing up as her daughter. Pressure. Because mm. now she's this teacher who gets things, she's known to want things to be, to be structured. And then you're her daughter, so you're not going to let her down. So there was that pressure as well. But I also liked it because all along she helped me. I, I was a, a bright student so it was it was easy okay. it was easy for me okay. from an academics perspective even from uh, obedience and all that and i did that class one um two th three and four all i remember at the time some t i had changing classmates because you see once the the provincial people or the district heads when they would be moved mm -hmm. the students those if the families move the ones new ones would come and there's also a strong at the time there was a, there was a bit of a, some presence of indian community i was actually going in, to ask that was it cosmopolitan yes. even with different races yes so there was indian community so all of those we would all meet in saint michael okay and th so those were my friends uh, from around the country and yeah, even from across, like my classmate, my, not my classmate, my desk mate from, maybe from class two was from Pakistan, Aliyah, she's now in, in the US. But just that seeing that, that whole mix, yes. Nice. Yeah. And how long, uh, okay, in this school, mm -hmm. are you, uh, I know I, I love the cosmopolitan aspect mm -hmm. and, you, and explaining that even the, the, level of the school in terms of it was really good yeah. also i like the fact that you've painted the picture of your mom mm. being a teacher and their yeah. discipline yes disciplinarian and therefore that's that's affecting your academics positively yes. correct correct um how long are you in this school up to class four which that's up to the when i was nine so that is up to 1989 uh-huh up to 1989 then I go, so ideally it was glamorized to go to boarding school. 
and at this time now, because my sis came in 1986, my bro came in, my younger bro came mm. in 1988. Oh, I should say I struggled because I was, I was an, the last child for a long yes. time. Yes. I struggled with my sis, um, with my sis being born. And I, the reason, I've just said my sis came in 1986, then I've remembered because you see, I'm living this life where I am accompanying my mother everywhere. Mm. I am her handbag. We are tight. We are what? Anything that's being bought, being brought into the house is is mine. It's because I'm the child. <laughs> yes. Then suddenly there was this. You're technically the last born at that time. Correct. Yes, I was the last born, and because my and the girl, and because my, my older bro is five years uh, older than me. So really, I was I was a child. I was the last born, but I was a child, and yeah. So, and my mom was generous towards me mm. and, and she was very caring and um, towards me. As much as she was strict, I knew she defended me. Cause anytime, I, I know there is like we had a mean house girl at some point and I saw my mom defend me uh, mm. with the house girl. And I also, with her sisters, cause she's also older in her family. Mm -hmm. So sometimes her sisters, you know how sisters come. And sometimes one, some, some of her sisters would be too strict on me. But I knew she had my back. I knew she had my back in such a way that I knew I could be a bit, I, I could be a bit, I could stretch. Could be a bit cheeky. Yes, I could, <laughs> that's the word. I was looking for the word. That doesn't make me look too bad. Uh, <laughs> so I could be a bit cheeky. And if they try and report it to my mom, and this happened once or twice, even my mom would be hearing this. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm now a grown mom, as you can see. Um, and my, I knew my mom had my back. So she would defend me and defend me loudly. And mm. I really loved that. So when now it was time for my sister to be born, which I didn't understand. You know, these days, at least the children are woke. They know there was a lot of TV. <laughs> and we didn't have a TV, though, Ooh. As, at that time. At that, I've, uh, I've uh. Just, yeah. Um, so by the time my sister, she's coming. Yes, I know my mom was pregnant. I, I didn't realize that she was pregnant. I didn't realize that whatever was budging is a child coming. <laughs> so when a court is being bought, I'm thinking, oh, Will I fit in this bed? Because you see now I'm six. I'm like, but why is mom choosing to move me from that other kind of bed to this one? It's not connecting to me that it's actually a child that's coming. There's a new human There's coming. There's a new <laughs> human coming. Or that when clothes come or when gifts are being brought, it didn't hit me that they're mm. not for me. Because everything that used to be brought, because I was a child and I was the last born, used to be mine. So I struggled when my sister was born. And that's now... Uh, so now at, when I'm eight... Um, so I go through now, we were at nine in terms of the glamorizing the boarding school. So by the time everyone is saying, let's go to boarding school, there is good, it's good to go to boarding because it's good education. I want, I looked forward to it. And the reason I didn't struggle with it and I really wanted to go, to go, it's because there was, there were two other children back home. Mm -hmm. And these children to me, they were disrupting the space or the peace that I had had for some time. That so, you are accustomed and used yes, to. Yes, that I was used to. Okay. So to get away so that I'm going to board to boarding school was actually first yes because now I'm grown, but then two because I would find some peace somewhere, then I would come back. And that's how I ended up going for interviews because we'd go for interviews around October or something November in the boarding schools in Embu the major ones was Kenny um boarding school and then there was St Ursula. And there was Ishiara, another one called uh, St. Peter. So I did all three interviews. I didn't get into Kenny, which was the top boarding school and the preferred one. And um, I got into St. Ursula. The mm -hmm. reason you've seen me posing on the, on, the Ken, on the Kenny one, you know, now in hindsight, mm -hmm. let me say what happened, then I'll tell you the hindsight. So we've gone, we are all these people. We are all nervous. You can imagine you've gone and you're nine years old. Mm. You know the exam you're about to go to determines if or not you get in. And the teacher stands, because this is 89. The head teacher, who was a tough head teacher at the time, I think she was Mrs. Enjoy or something, I can't remember. And she's talking to parents and us, the students, because the, the, the pupils, the prospective pupils. Yes. And you can see your mini. There are spots, the spots to be had are either 60 or something, but there's like over 400, over 500 Whoa. of you. Whoa, well, yes. they're going to tell me like 90. No, you, we were many. Okay. And she stands, that's a conversation I've never forgotten. And usually I forget quickly. 
she stands at the front, at the podium to say, okay, welcome, this is the school. I'm glad you all have come. As you can see, the interest is a lot. And I'm telling you, unless you come and pack a K KAA, don't even think about coming to my office. What? Yes. What? Yes. I have just remembered. That, that thing, that, that conversation disturbed me so much because I knew there is no way. I wanted to go to Kenya. And um, I knew, I looked around all these numbers. So it introduced in my mind, I'm like, you mean, you know what, because 89 is when the cars, the registration yes. numbers changed to K something. Yes. So that is when K A became and a K. And then now yes. it ends with a, with a letter. Correct. So it's not KYC 600, yes. it's KK321. Correct. B, and then it was, it was GST or it was a thing yes. if you have a KAA. I kid you not. She stood in the podium and said, unless you come and pack a KAA first, do not think of coming to my office to talk about a position for your child. What? Yes. That sank. And then that moment I realized, for sure, this school. Class? Yes. Classism? Yes, there's classism, but also... It meant there was a different way of getting these things done, mm. which was not necessarily merit. Yes. yes. Mm. Then I wondered of everyone who got in there, and I knew I was a bright child. I, I, I was. But I wondered, would it be fair that everyone who got in there, how, how many would have fairly passed the, mm. you know? So you didn't have the KAA? My parents, they're, they're civil servants. It's as in. The <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, no, of course. Yes. I, I knew. By the time it said like that, civil servants, we are, uh, the family has grown. There's no way. Uh, me, for me, it's the audacity to say that in yes, front of people. In, in front of people. And, wow. uh, and I'm nine. And yet, see, I can remember. Yes. That and we didn't, th that didn't have a name at the time. I didn't know corruption. Mm. I, it, it wasn't labeled yes. at the time. But like that's what that it even, is. It's not just classism, it's corruption. It is. Yes. If you tell me that pack KAA here, then I get you in. What is that? Yeah. Anyway, so that has never left me. And it's, I was going into Centrusa where, where now, when I said I didn't get in. And all along I went, did I, did I not get in because I didn't make the cut for the, um, for the exam? Or did I not get in because my parents didn't have enough mm, 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 to pack? Mm, mm. Okay. So then I decided, so then I was called in on all the others that I did. I actually did, there was another one called Kamuda, which was also good. So I did in four. So then, but of all of them, I chose to go to St. Ursula. St. Ursula was run by nuns and it's, um, it was in a more rural side of Embu. Okay, just hold on. Okay. You did four. Mm. Uh, what, what's the word? It starts with an I. Interviews. Interviews, yes. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you did four interviews. Mm -hmm. Why four? Because we needed to edge. Because the, the top, you see, Emb was known for having good boarding schools. Um, and my mom, again, back to academics, she wanted to be sure that at least I get the option. So yeah. do all, then let's choose after you've done all. Yeah. Yeah. But that also some work ethic. I yeah. mean, that's, this, this is, this is, this is at a young age. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Going to four different interviews is nothing small. Correct. At that age. Correct. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So why did you choose this particular one and you got accepted into the others? In fact, I think you did five, if I'm not wrong. No, I did. I did the Kenny, Kamudada, uh, St. Peter's and St. Ursula. So okay. I did four. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the reason I chose St. Ursula is because it was a girl only boarding. Kamudada and the other one and St. Peter's Ishara were boarding, were mixed, mixed. boarding. So it, that was the only thing. And is it you picking or you choosing or your mom choosing? We are doing it collaboratively. She, she involved me. So we engaged together. Wow. As in we discussed. First of all, this is like a parenting class already. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. like, and you didn't want, already you felt like, what was it? Why did you go for the girls? You were feeling boys are going to be distractions. I wonder, by the way, because St. Michael was um, was a mixed school. The day school was a mixed school. It just, I don't know. Uh, maybe, of course, she must have influenced me. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was nine. But okay. what I remember is we actually discussed it. She brought me to the table. We had the conversation. 
this is powerful yeah and you are now going to boarding school so yeah. i went to boarding school when i was in class 3 oh you did and, oh. Uh, yeah and <laughs> it uh, was a decision you made <laughs> <laughs> but i'm glad i did yes. in retrospect but now when i when now when i speak to people mm-hmm. i mean my daughter there's no way i'm taking her to boarding school it, there's no way <laughs> so mm-hmm. i'm trying to figure out mm-hmm. And you see from the way you are saying it it's like you wanted to go to boarding I school. Did. This is a young age you're talking nine. Yes. But it was glorified. In our time going to boarding school was the it. Yeah. Staying in the in the day school was not. Yes, okay. Yeah. And also if you if you wanted to edge um your chances of doing well. Yes. It, boarding school was the it. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's check into what's its name again? St. Ursula. St. Ursula. Yeah. 